So some basic properties of determinants. We're not going to prove these things, but these are important to know. Um, first of all, it has to be a square matrix. Okay, so you can only take the determinant of a square matrix. If I take my matrix, so I've got, think of this now in terms of rows. If I take, say, row 3, and I've got row 5, if I replace this row 3 with, say, row 3 plus some number times row 5, the new matrix is going to have the same determinant. Okay. If, on the other hand, if I take row 5, for example, and replace it with C times row 5, or maybe say 8 times that, the new matrix um, is going to uh, be the determinant of the old matrix times the C. And then finally, if I take, if I replace two rows, so if I take out row three and put in row five in its place, and then I take out row five and put the old row three in its place, the matrix is going to, the determinant of the new matrix is going to be the same, but it's going to be off by a factor of minus one. And the last thing is important is that if I take the determinant, well, let me clean that up, that's messy. If I take the determinant of the identity matrix, no matter what dimension, it's always going to be 1. OK, so what? So let's look at an example. Suppose I have this. I write this as a matrix. I'm going to try to get row, do the row operations to turn this into an identity matrix so then I know what the determinant of that new thing is going to be. So let's see. So let me write out my matrix. First thing I want to do is I want to get a 1 there because that's going to make my life easier. So if I take 1 half of row 1, then for my new matrix is going to be 1, 1, minus 1, 4. The determinant of this matrix is going to be the same thing as the previous matrix, but I'm going to have to multiply the old one by a half. So let's see. So now I want to get a 0 here. So I want to use this to put a 0 there. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take row 2 and add row 1 to it. So this plus this is 0. 4 plus 1 is 5. Now I want to make that a 1. So I'm going to take 1 fifth row 2. Now by the way, going from here to here, I did not change the determinant of the matrix. It's still the same because I just did a row operation. Now if I do that, I've got 1, 1, 0, 1. This did change the determinant because I multiply across a whole row by this. So the determinant of this new matrix is going to be uh, one fifth the determinant of the old matrix. All right, finally, I want to use this to get a zero there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace row one with row one minus row two. I'm going to leave the bottom row alone. So this will be 1 minus 0, 1 minus 1, and I have this. So this is now the identity matrix. This is my original matrix here. So I want to re late, relate the determinant of my original matrix with the determinant of um, the identity matrix. i got to basically keep track of what I did, what I do. So this changed it by multiplying by a half. This did not change it, so I'm going to ignore that. This changed it by multiplying by one fifth. This didn't change anything. So now, if I want to know what's the determinant of my original matrix, it's going to be 2 times 5 times the determinant of the identity matrix. And the determinant of the identity matrix is 1, so I get 10. 
Uh, does that match up with what I said originally was going to be the determinant of this matrix? If I go back to here and look at that, that's going to be 2 times 4 minus 2 times minus 1. It's going to be 8 plus 2 is 10. Right? So these row operations and converting this into a reduced row echelon form gives me the same result. Uh, now, what's nice about this um, is that for 2x2, two two, you're not going to use this, but if I go to a 3x3, three three, that is something I can now use because I don't know how to define the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix. Okay, so let's look at that example then. So let's put this in terms of a matrix. So this is going to be 3 times x. Here I get minus 6 times x, 12 times x. This is 0 times y, it's 1 times y, and 2 times y. This is 1 times z, 3 times z, and 2 times z. So I want to take this matrix, and I want to uh, put it in reduced row echelon form. If I can get the identity matrix, that means the inverse uh, exists, but I can also get the determinant. So let's see, I'm going to leave this as it is here because I've got nice multiples. So my row 2 I'm going to replace with 2 times row 1, because minus 6 plus 2 times 3 will be 0. So I leave this alone. So this is going to be minus 6 plus 2 times 3 is 0, 1 plus 3 times 0, then 3 plus 2 times 1 is going to be 5. And now here, let's see, so I'm going to take my row 3 and I'm going to subtract. So I need 4 times 3 will give me 12. So that's going to be 4 times row 1. Let me rewrite that. That's a little messy. That's three, or row 3 minus 4 times row 1. So 12 minus 4 times 3 is 0. 2 minus 4 times 0 is 2. 2 minus 4 times 1 is minus 2. Now notice these are row operations, and I've not changed my determinant. Right? So if this is my A, and this is some new C, this determinant of this matrix is going to be the same as the determinant of that. <coughs> okay, let's do some more row operations. This is now my pivot. I want to get a 0 there. So I'm going to take row 3 and subtract 2 times row 1 to get a 0. And again, I'm not changing any row, or not changing the determinant for this new matrix is going to have the same determinant. 0, 1, 5. This is going to be 0, 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. Minus 2 minus 2 times 5 is what? That's going to be minus 10 or minus 12. All right, now I want to use this to get zeros there. This is a little messy. So I want to make that a 1. So I'm going to take a minus 1 12th times row 3. So if I do that, I'm going to leave these rows alone. I'll have a 0, 0, 1. Now I can get rid of this and this. So how am I going to do that? So I'm going to take row 2 and subtract 5 times row 3. So I'm going to leave that row alone. So I'll have 0 minus 0, 1 minus 5 times 0, 5 minus 5. And now I'm going to take row 1 and subtract row 3. What am I going to get? I'm going to get 3, 0 minus 0, 1 minus 1. That's a 1, that's a 1. So the only thing I need to do here now is take 1 third row 1. If I do that, I'm going to get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is the identity matrix. So in terms of my original matrix and the identity matrix, this did not change, this, this, none of these things changed the determinant, but this changed it. 
right, so this is going to be times minus 1 12th. None of these things changed it, but that changed it, times 1 3rd. So the determinant of i, which is 1, is going to be equal to the determinant of a times this. So the determinant of a is going to be 1 times minus 12 times 3. So this is going to be minus 36. Uh, now you should be a little concerned here because of this negative sign. Uh, we said there's a geometric way to think about this, right? And it extends nicely to 3D. Right, so if I think of these as three vectors in 3D, I can basically extend these things and I can get a diamond shaped thing here in uh, 3D. Actually, it's not a diamond shape, it's going to be a, a, a 3D trapezoid, a parallelogram. And it's, this is going to be the volume of this parallelogram, but determinants can be negative. And what that means is that the orientation, the relative orientation of these three vectors, basically gets flipped in terms of how they relate to one another. So uh, check out the other video from Essence of Linear Algebra. They, just, they can do a good job of describing that. But this can be negative. The absolute value of this is going to be the volume of this uh, parallelogram. And the determinant of this thing is going to be minus 36. Okay. And all I had to do is keep track of these things. Uh, now one thing you should notice here, when I got to here, notice I had zeros everywhere below the diagonal. And if I multiply everything on the diagonal here, notice I get minus 36. Is that a coincidence? No, because if you look here, if I could do go through and if I don't change these things, I just leave them as they are, I can use this as a pivot to make a zero there and a zero there, and use that as a pivot to make a zero there. Right? And if I do that, that does not change the determinant. And then I'm going to basically divide by 3 and divide by minus 1 12th and get exactly the same thing here as I did before. So this extra step here wasn't actually necessary. I could have just used uh, the diagonals once I got it in this form, in row echelon form. <clears throat> so let's make that official. We're going to have three definitions here. Upper triangular matrix, diagonal matrix, and lower triangular matrix. An upper triangular matrix is any matrix where everything below the diagonal, and the diagonal is going to be along here. If everything below there is zero, we'll call it an upper, triangu upper triangular matrix. Same thing here. If I look at this diagonal, if everything above the diagonal is zero, this is going to be a lower triangular matrix. And if a matrix is both upper triangular and lower triangular, we'll just call it a diagonal matrix. So a diagonal matrix has zeros everywhere except maybe along the diagonal. Okay. And so in terms of the determinant, if I have a matrix in this form, notice I can use that as a pivot. I can do row operations to make that a zero, that a zero, that a zero, and that a zero. I have not changed the determinant. I can then go through and use this element to put zeros there, there, and there. I have not changed the diag. I'm sorry. I have not changed uh, the determinant, and I can keep going. Yet use that as a pivot to make that a zero and zero, and then make that a zero using that as a pivot. I have not changed the determinant of this matrix. And if I were now to uh, go through and divide by each of these diagonal elements, the determinant of this times, uh, or divided by the, each of those uh, diagonal elements, it would be equal to 1, because I then have an identity matrix. So what does this say? This says the determinant of this thing, so if the original matrix was A, would be equal to a11, where that's this entry, A22, which is that entry, A33, which is this one, and you just keep going 
and you basically you're going to have the product of the diagonal elements. Okay, so it's a very powerful idea.